Welcome back. In America, black farmers are near extinction, yet there's a slow and steady group of young black farmers that are working to change that. The percentage of black farmers has been on a steady decline for the past century. While there were nearly a million black farmers a century ago, there are currently fewer than 50,000 in the United States. Sankofa Farms is one of the new black owned farms that's trying to change that trend and they're also trying to connect black connect back land ownership and farming to black liberation and black empowerment. Founded by Kamal Bell, the farm cultivates 12 acres of land in Cedar Grove, North Carolina, but it's no ordinary farm. It's also an education center for young black men, instilling in them essential life skills. Joining me now is the founder and CEO of Sankofa Farms, Kamal Bell. Welcome to the show, my brother. All right, thank you, thank you. Thank you for having me. I've been looking forward to this all week. Oh man, so have I, my brother. Many of our viewers would already know, but for the ones that don't, could you tell us a little bit about what Sankofa means and why that ended up being the name of your farm? Yes, I can. Um, Sankofa is a word that comes out of West Africa and it means to go back and get it. And it's represented by a mythical bird and also by this adinkra symbol that you see here on my sweatshirt. Well, how I, how I communicate to our students, I communicate it to them as to remember your African ancestry as you move forward in life. So that is our underlying theme for everything that we do here at Sankofa Farms. Absolutely, man. It's a beautiful sentiment coming out of the Akan. Uh, it is not taboo to go back and fetch that which has been left behind. That's exactly what you're doing. You're going back and retrieving something from our history. And Sankofa is no ordinary farm. Tell me about what you're growing uh, and how you help, it seems to be, uh, deal with the question of food insecurity, food deserts uh, in particular. So um, how we address the issue of food deserts is we look at it from the human aspect of sustainability. So sustainability, uh, a lot in agriculture is around the practices that you use to grow your food. But I thought about it in the sense of our students. So if we're going to have a sustainable food source and we're going to be in control of it and it's going to be long standing, the students have to have the knowledge. And as we think about the history and the, um, the trauma that black farmers have faced in North America, I start to think about how can we be how can we begin to reclaim our heritage and our ancestry and then combine that also with land ownership and land access. So for me incorporating the students to be able to solve these problems long term and incorporate my sons as well is the only way we have a sustainable approach to this whole issue of food deserts because once you pick it up as far as the scientific side of producing crops that's one thing but we have to be able to get our youth in to make this thing long term and to make it truly sustainable what's up with the bees man you have a fascination with bees I, I, I definitely do. So um, one of the students in our program, his name is Cameron. He's actually in the footage that's been playing. He's uh, 18 now, and he's been with the program for um, five years since he was in seventh grade. And he was telling me when he was around 13 or 14 that he wanted to, um, he wanted us to get bees. Now at this time, I'm like the average black person. I'm like, yo, look, I'm scared of bees. Like, I don't want any bees here. I'm, I'm terrified. <laughs> you have to keep my kid, man. So, I ended up um, connecting with a apiary here in um, in Durham, and once I did that, we ended up taking the students out to to the apiary. And the apiary is any place where you have bees, and we all just were fascinated. And what just so happened was I got more interested in the bees than all the students. So I went and got certified, and upon me entering the certification process, I noticed that it was no black people in the room. It was like I think I was the only it was it was two or three out of like thirty people. So I started to think about if I have access to, to different spaces and into doors, the students are coming with me too. So if I go in, I'm bringing five with me, or four. So the following year, four students ended up um, going to get certified as well. So I'm a certified beekeeper. Four of the students in the program are certified beekeepers. And then my wife just recently went and got certified. So we just have like a, a like a long standing fascination with the bees that you can trace their ancestry and their history back to ancient Kemet. Um, you can you can look at like uh, in Angola, who was the largest uh, export of beeswax in the early 17th century um, as examples of our legacy in our in our um, in our uh, connection to bees. So for me, it was a simple it's a simple connection. So now we're managing uh, 53 bee colonies. 
Wow, that's amazing. I'm still terrified. I'm gonna leave that to you, bro. If, if you're doing that in Durham, I'm, I might come as close as Riley, but that's as close as I'm getting to them bees. But I respect it, man. I respect it. Um, talk to me about the Academy Someone for Young Black come. Men. That's raised a lot of eyes. Uh, I, I'm going to come out. I'm going to have a whole costume on. I'm going to be in the house while y'all out at that bee farm, man. But talk to me about the Academy for Young Black Men, man. It, I'm, I'm very excited about it. So so the Academy for, the, for Young Black Men started with me when I was a school teacher. And I started to see how... There was a correlation between the students coming to my class, improving their behavior, um, doing better in school, and um, and me. So like there was a mentorship aspect, there was a development aspect, there was an economic aspect, and I designed this program called Sankofa Farms Agricultural Academy. And when I designed this program, what I wanted to do was I wanted to be, I wanted to give the student access to land. I wanted to give them um, a sense of independence. And, and most importantly, I wanted to give them a, um, access to healthy food. So when I pitched this idea to the principal at the school at the time, this is around two, 2016, she got mad and was like, I don't want to do it. So I was just like, all right, I, I don't really, I'm not going to go back and forth with you. We were acquiring the farm at the time. So we literally just brought the students out to the farm um, around that time. So the students who have stuck with the farm have been here since we've cleared trees to now where we have um, seven greenhouses and are getting ready to get an eighth and 53B colony. So they, they stuck through, through with all of this and have seen it grow. So my main, um, my main mission with them is to expose the students to um, agriculture, but also STEM careers, and then the economic uh, portion. So we're trying to take all these different uh, aspects and avenues and create one intersection, and that being the farm. What inspired you to fight and push and organize and build and invest, not just in black farming, but in the vision of, of black liberation, of black freedom? Um, that's a great question. I don't get asked very often. It's a very good question. What ultimately inspired me was uh, my experiences growing up. Um, my father has a library of like for ages, like Dr. Ben, um, Ivan Van Cernema, um, Elijah Muhammad, like John Henry Clark, we can like go on. Um, and I dibble dabble in the information growing up. But then after my high school experience, I, I went to Catholic school. I started to look at the resource question. And I'm thinking like, why do they have so many resources here? And then we don't in our spaces. So that led me to go to North Carolina a and I was in the library and I literally was in the black studies section all the time. And I, I, I came upon the message to the black man by Elijah Muhammad. And the underlying theme I, I received from the book is what, is, what are you gonna do for your people? What skill or what asset or what can you give back to your community? And for me, that came up to be farming. I literally changed my major that year. And the, uh, another underlying theme I've gotten through all of this is why do you want to be a poor farmer? Like people have tried to push me out of the industry and um, try to prevent me from going into farming. So once I went on this path and I started to be comfortable and develop an understanding of myself and my gift, I then decided, you know what? I want to go do something that can give back to black people. Wow. The, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said, no man can rise above the condition of his people. What you're doing with your farm and your work and your academy is to try to bring your people with you as part of a freedom dream, a vision of liberation and justice for everybody, brother. I appreciate what you're doing, Kamal. Thank you, and make sure you come back again so we can talk about it. But leave them bees on the farm, bro. I'm terrified. <laughs> I, 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 I'll everybody the bees stay with me. But I appreciate it. Okay, okay, that's fair. That's fair, bro. <laughs> I see you, man. Still